His kind, I've been killing for almost 20 years. I've been on five different continents. Hence the reason he brought his uncle to come handle shit for him. Well, you I really don't give a shit we were, about we some were little peon arrow. Who police officers deal with different types of criminals every day. But what happens when police officers have to deal with people who think they're better than others simply because they have a different skin color? Here are five times racist suspects were caught and arrested by cops. Starting with 38-year-old Joey Christian, who on the evening of April 10th, 2022, walked into an AT&T store in Friendswood to buy himself a device. But when the store employee attempted to speak to Christian that evening, he would have never expected the kind of reaction coming his way. Him coming here trying to start an account with it. a social security card in the state of Texas is an ID. Okay, I didn't need a driver's license as well or a state ID. No, you don't. Yeah, that's the way I have to run a credit check. That's the only way. Why? Christian wants to buy a device, but company protocols mean that the store attendant here is unable to sell anything to Christian unless he provides a driver's license or state ID for the attendant to run a credit check. You know your driver's license number off the top of your head? Youngster. Huh? Um, he looked up. The, the mouthy and I'll just push him away. That's what the that, that he came out and got his uncle coming here. Because there's a reason I'm with T Mobile and not with ATT because I don't like dealing with peons who don't know their place. Because very bluntly, there's a reason. T-Mobile loves me because I don't deal with peons. So like I said, call your manager, call somebody in charge because you are just an authorized retailer. You don't even, you're not even at t Yeah, exactly. So call your manager, like I asked you to the first time, I don't give a what your manager is. Call your manager so he can come in and he can just talk. Huh? I haven't been rude yet. You haven't seen Rude yet. I promise you. The government's trained me to be very, very rude. I promise you. You haven't seen Rude yet. Rude, I'm asking you the same thing I asked you when I walked in. Call your manager so I can deal with him. So I can deal with somebody in charge and take a hand. You have his number. I didn't ask you to call him. Or for me to call him. Give it to me. But you can call him. I'm not going to ask you to. You can ask him to come in though. Because you have a very impatient customer in here that's not going to deal with peons. He's going to deal with somebody in charge. In case you're wondering, a peon refers to an unskilled laborer or a low-ranking officer. But if you think that's the lowest Christian can go, think again. Because Christian's tyranny is only just beginning. Very well, who's your manager? To be honest. Because honestly, I don't really give shit about your attitude. Who's your manager? I don't give shit. He's here. What is his name? So I can call. Ryan. Huh? Ryan. Ryan what? Williams. Ryan Williams. Yes, sir. That's your main store manager. Yes, sir. Because very well, I don't give a f your, your opinion is or any anybody else's. I mean, I've been killing people to make sure you and him and everybody else has their goddamn civilians' rights for years. That's the reason he came and got his uncle. So you're, you're, your boss is Ryan Williams. What's your name? Mo? Yes, sir. What the f name is that? What is your actual real name? Mo what? Christian continues to make racist remarks, calling the store attendant, whom we now know as Mohammed, a f***ing Arab and claiming to be a veteran who has killed multiple people to protect the peace of Americans. Christian eventually bites off more than he can chew when he turns on a harmless customer who's been recording the whole thing. Alright, you know what? You know what? I really don't give a what some bitch has to say. I really don't give a shit about some goddamn Arab that I've been killing their goddamn kind for six months. Okay. Almost two, actually, Super nice. two years. Six months on the last country I was in. Okay. Because people like this are the reason our country's going what it's going to. Because I've been killing his kind for longer than you've probably been alive. I'm older than you, dude. How old do you think you are? How old do you I, think I am? How old do I think I am? I'm 55 years old. That's cute. Okay. His kind, I've been killing for almost 20 years. I've been on five different continents. Hence the reason he brought his uncle to come handle for him. Well, 
You I really don't give a shit we about were, some we little peon Arab who actually doesn't belong here. We were in line first. We were actually trying to get service. And oh, sweetie, you're in. fine. I thought you worked here. Uh, okay. And I called the police. That's fine. Yeah. Now, at first, it's easy to think that maybe the things Christian faced during his wartime made him bitter. But after listening to him go on and on, it's clear that Christian is just a rude, bitter individual who probably never even went to war in the first place. Unknown to Christian, the lady who was defending Mohammed wasn't just doing it to merely support the poor attendant, she had also called the police, who were now on their way to arrest him. Yeah, it is funny. It's the issue. The issue was the boy inside was really great to my nephew. And, and I think I tried to handle it. I asked the manager. He tried to argue with me and told me who the manager was. So I told him, Mr. Brian Williams. Christian was later arrested and charged with public intoxication and disorderly conduct. But making racial slurs isn't the only thing racist people do to drive home their unhealthy disgust. Some racists, like our next suspect, are prepared to stoop as low as getting a nine-year-old child arrested. There's a little, a little black woman walking and spraying stuff on the sidewalks and trees. The voice you're hearing over the phone is that of Gordon Losh. On the 22nd of October, 2022, Gordon called non-emergency police in Caldwell, New Jersey, complaining about a little black woman he claimed was spraying stuff on the sidewalks and trees. What's that? Oh, what are you using the sponsor? You're trying to catch him? When a responding officer eventually arrives at the scene later that evening, he's shocked to find out that the little black woman in question is none other than a nine-year-old girl, Bobby Wilson. As the officer stands there trying to make sense of why anyone would want to call the cops on a nine-year-old, the mother of the child, Monica Joseph, approaches the bewildered officer. She later explains to the officer that her daughter was just trying to kill some bugs and nothing more. Someone just called in and said that she was alone spraying something on the grass. She's catching the... I see that. To make matters even more interesting, the officer also learns that Gordon Losh, the man responsible for calling the cops on the young girl, is living just across the street from the nine-year-old and her mother. Does he not live across the street from me? I thought too, and I thought, wow, yeah. you're doing a school project. Yeah, somebody yeah. else helped her. What's your address? 12 Elizabeth. 12? Right there. Okay. Yes, I'm saying we are across You're obviously the next door neighbors. Yeah. I yelled okay. him one of his mother's right. right. Noticing that the police and her mom were in deep conversation, the little girl asks them if she's in some sort of trouble. No. No, you're not in trouble. How many did you kill? How many trees did you save? They're bad. They're all over the yeah, place. He should be happy. Really After the incident, the police invited Bobby and her mother to the West Caldwell Police Department, where the mother and child were given a tour and a chance to discuss race relations. As for the caller, he continues to insist that he was not engaging in racial profiling and has since apologized for the incident. At least Gordon only made a call. Our next suspect took her hate for Indians so far that she landed in jail because of it. On August 24th, 2022, a group of Indian American women were going about their quiet business at around 8 p.m. when they suddenly came across this unidentified woman. What happens next makes one of the most intriguing cases of racial abuse ever caught on camera. Then stay there. Don't with me. Stop. We were not Harassing innocent strangers just because of their accent or how they look is both appalling and disgusting. But she doesn't stop there. Oh, come, come closer. Come closer. Oh my god, guys, record. She's hitting me. She's hitting me. Oh, oh my god. god. She's oh my god. Me. Oh, she's hitting me. She's hitting me. Afraid for their lives, the women call 911 asking for help. Hello, 
Yeah, and she she threatened us with she threatened. Okay. Uh, she's uh, she's a white woman wearing a black dress. No, I'm not white. I'm Mexican. She's Mex. I'm Mexican, and I paid my <laughs> way here. Oh my God, she's hitting my friend now. She's I am not hitting your friend. You guys are all about. I don't know, but don't she just hit my hand. Though. She tried here. to hit my phone again. I'm in a video. Y'all. I'm at the 69 parking lot. Oh, lock. here. Can you Here's please send some cops here? Oh, these <laughs> Indians. They come to America yes. because they want a better life. Yes, but they're obviously not wishing the great life in India. What's even more intriguing about this is that this woman is no different from the woman she's harassing. According to her, she's not even a full-blown American. She was born and raised in the US, but her country of origin is Mexico. So you'd expect that if anyone would understand their plights of having to live as second-class citizens, it would be her. I hate you Indians, that's why. Would you guys come to our country? If you are Mexican, why don't you go back to Mexico? I'm a Mexican American. I was born here. What makes you feel the way you speak? Because I'm, I'm a Mexican American, but, but I speak you. English. If the four of us were talking, what, why would you come and talk to us and make a racist comment? Now don't she's hitting the third person. I'm you not going to talk to you when you have your camera on. If you want to turn your camera off, I'm happy to talk. Oh, we are in it and we are cheese. Telling us about you the one who came and talked to me. I'm talking she to my friends. Like everywhere I go, you Indians are if life is so great in India, she's why the are you here? I am a naturalized citizen here. You are a naturalized citizen. You're not a born and raised citizen. Don't engage. Don't engage. Why are you here? Don't engage. I'm not going to talk to you because you are not my friend. You are a nobody. You are a stranger, and you have no right. Come and talk to us. No, you're right. One of the victims eventually has enough of the woman's abuse and courageously confronts her. But in a confusing change of things, the racist begins apologizing to the woman. You know what, ma'am? You're right. Ma'am, I am sorry. Ma'am, ma'am, I am sorry. You know what? Peace. I'm trying to reach out. Peace. I overstepped my bounds and I'm sorry. She's suddenly apologizing and saying peace. I don't know what that means, but... But please have them please, come here please, because yeah, we are please, not feeling safe here. We don't feel safe right now. What? Well, I'm not gonna hurt you guys. Look at me. I'm all of 100 pounds. And you guys oh. weigh well over 200 pounds. Stop mm -hmm. videoing me. I swear to God, I will break your camera. Stop! I'm walking away. I'm leaving you all alone. Turn the cameras off. You two now, transitioning from being apologetic because you heard the police were coming to body shaming the women within a minute, I think it's safe to say that this woman might have some undiagnosed mental problems. Not yet. Not yet. I don't see anybody. I'm going to go to the restaurant. Let's just go to the restaurant. Oh my god, now she's going to the third friend. Are you with them? She's Yeah, yeah. She's coming back. Stop woman! She's, she's oh my god, she's... Please come. Please get here quickly. Shaburi, don't engage. Shaburi. Hey, there's a car coming. Be careful. Police officers eventually arrived at the scene before things escalated beyond control. The racist was later ID'd as 58-year-old Esmeralda Upton. After the incident, she was arrested and charged with assault, bodily injury, and terroristic threats. But if you think Esmeralda is the only aggressive racist on our list, that's because you've not met this guy. Well, what's your point, sir? Because I can. Officer, can you please? I'm renting this area. And he's harassing me about the shirt that I'm wearing. On June 14th, 2018, Mia Irizarry was trying to celebrate her 24th birthday in the forest preserves of Cook County when a strange man suddenly approached her, asking her why she was wearing a sleeveless Puerto Rico flag shirt. What happens next is absolutely incredible. I did rent so it. I have a permit for the this. Permit right, so can you please step away from me, sir? You can you please step away from me? You're not going to change us. 
You know that? I'm not trying to change anyone. No. I'm just trying to come here no. for a birthday the party. The not going to change the United States of America. Okay. Period. Okay. You should not be wearing that in the United States of America. Okay. Are you a citizen? Yes, I am a Are citizen. Are you a United States citizen? Can you please get away from me? Then you should not be Can wearing Can you please that. get away from me? The uh, United States citizen advocate here is 62-year-old Timothy Tribbis. And as you can see, Timothy is a white supremacist who thinks he's better than everyone just because he's American. But what's even more appalling about this situation is the cop who had been standing there all along watching Timothy harass Mia without saying anything. Officer, officer, I feel Not highly right uncomfortable. Now. Can you, you please citizen? grab him? Are you an American uh, citizen? Please, officer. I'm an American citizen. I would like to know. As you can see, the police are not even, he's not even grabbing him. Like he's, this guy's just walking up to me. He basically got in my face, damn near almost touched me. This is what I'm wearing, guys. This is what I'm wearing. A cop refusing to come to the aid of a citizen he's sworn to protect is simply both shocking and atrocious. But if you think that's the only crazy thing that happens in this video, think again. I got some really, really, really nephews and nieces that'll Can you go please down get away from me? If Can you're an American citizen, you should be Can you please get away from me? Can you please get away from me? Can you please get away from me? Let me tell you something. Puerto Rico is an American state. It is an American state. Yes, they are. State. They vote for our president. You should wear it. Hey, hey. Hey, 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 calm down. Get away. Baby girl. You are an American. I know I am. I know you are. Hey, calm down. down. I'm ex officer. I'm renting. I paid for a permit for this area. I do not feel comfortable with him here. Is there anything you can do? No, we're gone. Well, hey, we're not gonna sit around and be with you. Hey, hey, don't you dare walk over here, okay? That woman. Okay, well, how come you're saying something when he's going up, but when he was coming up to me, you didn't do anything? It wasn't until Mia's brother stepped in that Timothy eventually backed off, and God knows what would have happened if her brother hadn't showed up the minute he did. And even when Mia reached out to the officer again, begging him to keep Timothy from her, the officer just stood there and watched without saying a word. To make matters worse, when Mia's brother finally decided to go up against Timothy, the officer was first to react, telling Mia's brother to back off. And things would have taken a turn for the worst if another police official hadn't shown up. We re-rented. Yes. After speaking to Timothy, the new officer proceeds to talk to Mia in order to hear her own side of the story. He went to go get the food and stuff, and they were all sitting here, and I said politely, we rented out the property, like, do you guys mind moving? Him and whatever female he was with, they were like, sure, absolutely, don't, no problem. I said thank this you. In the blanchard? Yeah, and they were about moving everything to that table, I guess getting ready to leave or whatever. He came up to me, and I have it on video, and he's like, why are you wearing that shirt? You're not American. And, like, 
I apologize, but he got like this close to me and he was following me at one point. And you were by yourself? And no, that officer in 1405, I told him multiple times, officer, I do not feel comfortable. Can you please grab him? Like he is harassing me. I do not feel comfortable. And he was just watching. He literally was just standing there watching the whole thing happen. Like nothing. He didn't touch me. He didn't touch me. He just got really close to me. And I know if I wouldn't have moved, he would have. Yeah, no, you did he would have. And I'm glad you came back here. Yeah. Because you guys were the ones to call, right? No, no. some lady call called call earlier. So that someone had already called. You guys, this just so happened, just happened coincidence. Mm -hmm. This is all a coincidence, basically, because we didn't call anyone right away. In a strange twist of things, the officer learns that Mia wasn't the one she had been deployed to go and meet, and that their meeting was all coincidence. Which makes you wonder what would have happened if the officer hadn't shown up in the first place. After a thorough investigation into the case, Timothy was later arrested and charged with assault and disorderly conduct. The second officer did not fail to report the first officer, who was relegated to desk duty pending an investigation into the incident. At least Timothy was only arrested for making racial slurs. Our next suspect got his ass kicked before getting arrested. This unidentified man was making racial slurs in the hallway of his apartment when another neighbor confronted him about it. But instead of admitting that what he did was wrong, the unidentified man proceeds to assault the neighbor, who ended up winning the match. After realizing he'd lost the fight, the middle-aged man ran into his apartment, grabbed a machete, and began threatening to harm people. When police eventually arrive at the scene, the unidentified man, whose name turns out to be Jim, tells officers his own side of the story. When did it start? All right, when my roommate, Mr. Troy Johnson, who is now in apartment 22, okay. did not like my use of the M. Okay. And I said, dude, I've earned every right in the world. Just don't consider it. I'm trying not to. Okay. But I've earned every right in the world to use that word when I was seven years old and I was written by six black men. Okay. That kind of gives me the right to use that word, in my opinion. Okay. Said, no, it doesn't. That's ignorant. Yes, ignorant. What was ignorant is the fact that you still call me crack. Okay. You know? So it's been kind of like Telling the police that you've earned the right to use the N-word just because you got some letters from six black men when you were seven? That's just ridiculous. How many? Five, all in 22, and all trying to climb her up and say they didn't do it. Right? I'm just in my, you know, I step out of my hallway. Do you know specifically who they were? The Trayvon, Kyra, uh, Troy, and whomever else was in the apartment. What's with the machete? What's up? No, it's for me to protect myself. Where, what were you doing upstairs with the machete? Where's your apartment at, first off? 18. 18, which is just over right, on the right other there, side, right? Right there. Right. 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 So, did my, kill me did my partner upstairs see you in the hallway, or did he see you in your room? Did he come uh, to your door? Are talking about the guy in the white shirt? Yeah. He saw me in the hallway. Saw you in the hallway? Yeah, because okay. I was coming around my apartment. Okay. Because you knew we were here, or what? Well, I knew that if you guys weren't here, I still had to kind of protect myself. So you were going to them to protect no, I yourself? I was not going to them. Okay. I was standing my ground. In the hallway? Yes. Does it make sense? Not standing your ground in the hallway, standing your ground would be in your apartment. Did you know that, I right? did that. Because that sounds like you were coming in the hallway because you want to retaliate because you got your butt kicked. It's not retaliation, it's okay. protection. So this all started in the hallway, right? Why? You were talking to your roommate? No. Where did this start? It, talk, it started in my apartment with and Mr. Troy Johnson, who has warrants in Fairfield County. Okay. Well, I don't care about that right now. I, I'm, I'm here for this, okay? I don't give a crap about their warrants right now. I care about this. Imagine throwing your friend under the bus just because you had a fight that you started and got your butt kicked afterwards. That's disgusting behavior. You, you were in your apartment with your roommate. Yeah. You used the N-word. He said you can't use that. You said you were in the right to use right. that, right? Because of the abuse that I suffered as a child. And so an argument ensued, right? Right. What point were you attacked, though? Was it in your apartment? Or I was in by Ronald Ostrowski in apartment 19, okay. who came down the hallway. And first, I defended myself, and I did fairly well. And then I had 
five of them that came up and defended him and helped him, and the five of them helped abuse me. Okay, so this so was in the hallway. Twenty-two. Yes. So you stepped out in the hallway, and that's when you were attacked by who? Uh, five hundred twenty-two. Not only is it obvious to the officers from the way the man slurs his words that he's had way too much to drink, but the unidentified man also tells a completely different story about what happened that night. To make matters worse, not once does Jim admit to being racist. As far as he's concerned, he's earned the right to say the N-word because of the abuse he had suffered as a child. It's all like it's something racist in that. It's like racist. Oh, he got a, he got a noose. He got me a skippy, I got him news. You know? I, I, I have a right, you know, to freedom, re religion, speech. But you, you understand, like, using yeah, racial that's, slurs that's, can incite people to violence. I didn't do that. But you also understand that if they use racial slurs against me, that also incites violence. Yes, but that doesn't give either one of you the right to put your hands on each other. They put their hands on me. I did not put my hands on them. It looks like you lost a fight, is what it looks like to me. Well, it looks like I it looks like you it, also were in the hallway with a machete, not defending yourself that was necessarily. Defending myself before you but guys showed trying up. Trying to start a fight. To make no, that wasn't to start a fight. Okay. That was not to start a fight. Jim continues to deny starting the fight as well as the motivation behind taking his machete, but the officers aren't buying it, and every question they ask confirms this. That was to defend myself before you guys got here because I had already called you. Why didn't you defend yourself then, in your apartment? They weren't in my apartment. Who's in your apartment now? Should be nobody but my cat and I. Okay. That's it. And, you, went, and, and you retrieved your machete from where? My apartment. Was anybody in your apartment when you grabbed your machete? Troy was. And then he fled. Okay. So at that point, you could have locked your door and stayed in your apartment, correct? Once he fled. Okay. So then why did you go back out into the hallway? To wait for you guys. Because you were my next best protection. That's okay. it. Okay. Why couldn't you barricade yourself or put yourself in the apartment? Come on, man. Please. With the unidentified man refusing to admit to instigating violence, the officers are left with no choice but to interview everyone involved in the conflict, starting with this lady. Did you see what happened? Yeah. White neighbor? Yeah, we've got to take another Okay, his neighbor. Don't you say it no goddamn more, you know? So he jumps out of his apartment and put him up. And the way because you just start yeah. got to fight him. He busted his up. And he goes, and now the machine. The lady confirms to the police that the unidentified man did indeed start the fight. After speaking with her, the officers then proceed to talk to Ron, the man the unidentified man had gone into a fight with, to hear his side of the story. Hey, are you alright? Yeah, come on. You guys are alright. What uh what happened with Jim? Jim wanted to beat my okay. and then I had to fight him. Okay, are you hurt at all? Yeah, I was. I mean, I got my kicked. Okay, but he didn't... He, he, had, he had all his friends over there. Okay. I had no friends. I have no friends over here. Hey, Ron, well, so I, are, I you, are you do stabbed anything. or anything? Huh? Are you stabbed or anything? He had a knife, a machete. I want to make... <laughs> he has a, he I know, has we've a, already got him. No, he him. told me he was going to cut me up. Okay, but you didn't get stabbed. No, he, he did not stab me because I, I, man, I moved. I moved yeah. as fast as you know. Why did he want to do that to me? I don't know. He was supposed to be my friend. Yeah. And, you know, when you're supposed to have a friend, they're not supposed to do that to you, right? No, friends aren't supposed to do that to each other, right? Right. Is that correct? Absolutely. But what did it come to? It comes to him wanting to come, at, yeah. come after me and stuff like that, and then I had to, I had to fight myself. You yes. can see I have my blood, the yeah. blood on my oh, hands. It seems like you handled yourself well. No, I, I took him out. Yeah. I took him out quickly. So and this I mean, was, so just to be clear, this is mutual combat. No, and I'm mutual not a fight. bad dude. No, I'm I not. A, no, why. I'm not telling you I'm tougher than anybody what? else. I'm not tougher than him. I'm not yeah. tougher than you. I'm not tougher than anybody. But this was mutual combat. You two were fighting each other. Yeah, no, he was coming after me. Right. And, and you I defended just, yourself. I, yeah, and okay. I, just, I just took him out. And I just, and I had him on the ground and I just... Pound him out, you know, and it just—I I was done. I was done with it. And then all his friends were coming in. And all the, all, 
all the people that he knows. The most interesting part about this interview is how Troy initially doesn't want to say anything about the fight in order to protect his friend. A stark contrast to Jim, who is ready to do anything to have his way, including throwing his friend under the bus. But unfortunately for Jim, the final nail in his coffin was being set in motion. Y'all leave me the hell alone. Who's that? You, Who's him. Jim? Oh, him. Y'all and him. Leave me the hell alone. So you have a question. Did he point uh, a, a knife at you? Yeah. Did he make a statement towards you? I'm asking. Yes! In the hall! What did he say to you specifically? Nigga, he to chop my head off. Oh yeah, he to chop my head off. Do you believe he I think he needs to be got to the hospital. Do you believe he was? Well, we done physically fought before, so. It's yes or no. It's pretty much the answer is how we can go from there. Where you gonna take him? Hospital or jail? Dangerous. Wait, listen. Is he dangerous? Do I feel a threat? No. But he's yes. Okay. <laughs> but okay, cause we already. You know, so I'm not scared. I'm all right with chopping heads with it all. Do you understand? But he is dangerous to other people. After speaking to all the witnesses available, the officers then proceed to present all the evidence they have against him. Here's what I'll tell you. Because I'm getting a bunch of different stories, but I have a lot of people saying that you're making racial slurs and threats. They're getting people in here upset. You don't understand. He's one of them that was one of them. Me. Okay, well what I'm hearing from other people is that you attacked Ron when he defended himself, other people pulled him off. Why would I? Uh, why would I, I have attack, no idea. Why would I attack a white girl, a white guy with racial slurs? I'm not saying you attacked him why with would racial I slurs, I'm saying you attacked him with your fist. But other people in this building of different races are claiming that you're making terrible statements that could lead to you getting a And you know what? Making provocations and fighting words. Oh, were you not making racial slurs? I did to my roommate. Okay. Not directly to him or about him. You understand but because that. I put him out of my apartment because he couldn't accept the fact that I said what I had to say. I said, get the out of my apartment. Okay, so it sounds like you're pissing people off to the place where they're causing this. It's damage. my apartment! Then stay in your apartment. And it's don't what I did! Open. How did you get your feet in the hallway if you stayed in your apartment? Because they came down knocking on my door. Don't Check open. the security cameras. Okay. I'm getting three different stories, but a lot yeah, of more people that, 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 listen to the Okay, yeah, listen go down to here them. and talk to them, and I'm gonna say if we can I. No, you cannot! Go down there and listen to them. I'm getting real tired of this. Go down there, act like an adult, and listen to what the medics have to say. Hey, you wanna say it loud enough to have somebody else come down here and beat your Hey, get a witness statement. We're good? We're going to jail. Ah! Brad Minnesota. We're gonna find your back. In the end, Jim was arrested for making threats with the machete.